Right. So um, we're here today with Dave from Digital Dave's Audio Visual Installation. Um, if you haven't been out to see his shop, you're going to get a little bit of a sneak peek in amongst this today. But um, we're here specifically for the very, very first unboxing video of the brand new TK850, um, which Dave's gladly lent us his establishment uh, to, to use to do it in. So Dave, thanks for having us. Very, very welcome. Always a pleasure. Um, so this is the, the brand new TK850 from BenQ, as yet unreleased in Australia. This is the very first time anyone's seen it. Uh, it's a 3000 lumen uh, home cinema projector, but it's a crossover model. So uh, one of the things that Dave and I have spoken a lot over the, the last couple of years is about having a projector that's bright enough to live in a home uh, living room but still be a good um, home theatre projector. Yep. So hopefully we're going to uh, exceed his expectations today, that's the plan, um, by having a look at this one. So without further ado, let's get to the unboxing and get this uh, sucker opened up. So it's got a bit of stuff on the outside of the box. Um, these were produced in, uh, this, this sample was produced in December 2019. Um, we'll have some nice close-up videos, uh, close-up shots throughout the video to, to show you uh, what's in the box but starting with what's in the box what is in the box Dave what's thank that? god there's a power cable in the box <laughs> we always like to have an IEC power cable um, and that looks like it might be the remote control it does look like it um, so being a crossover model it has a white remote control rather than a, a black remote control and it should be backlit as well probably maybe maybe not maybe it's got no batteries in it I well, hope it had no batteries in it of course it's a brand new projector uh, what have we got there What's that? Quick start guide. That's the one. Uh, user manual on a disc. Not that anyone has those anymore. Uh, and then the actual box parts themselves. So yeah, let's uh, check that out. Okay. So it's a full HD, no UHD. Of course it is, 4K projector. <laughs> He's laughing at me. <laughs> I should know better. Uh, full HD. Uh, in 1080p, but uh, UHD 4K uh, in the rest. And um, if, I think if I read my specs earlier correctly, it's a 90, 97% uh, Rec. 709 or 98% Rec. 709, uh, and uh, also does some of the uh, the Rec. 2020 color space as well. That's interesting. New color for the front. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so Cinema Master Video, so we're still using the same colour as what we use in the W2700, W5700. Uh, lens cover built in, looks like we have um, vertical uh, lens shift as well, uh, built in here, yep, and a slide cover to cover up all the, the bits that you don't want to see once it's all... Especially when it's mounted upside down on the ceiling. Yeah, spot on. Do you want to talk us through what you're seeing on the back there in terms of uh, inputs and outputs? Two HDMI inputs, Okay. Cool. both HDCP 2.2, which is good. A lot of projectors are just the one. Mm -hmm. um, not used all that often in a home theatre scenario, for, as in both of them, um, but fantastic that it's got both. USB 3, also a separate USB if you did need to power something, for example, a fibre optic HDMI if you did need to power that. Um, fiber optic out and audio out as well for non-home theater related scenarios. RS-232, a 12 volt trigger, if we are talking about a, um, a motorized screen perhaps, mm. uh, and just a, a, a service port as well. Yep. So the service ports, it's an interesting one now. It's kind of redundant because these are, uh, these projectors are all able to be updated by a firmware by USB. Okay. Um, so I'm noticing here, this one here, USB 3. Um, so USB 3 is also a media reader, so uh, we can plug in a, um, a USB card with movies on it or whatever and play it directly from it. We can do uh, all sorts of other stuff as well, we do PowerPoint presentations and stuff, yep. Not we, we harp on those things. Um, and uh, the other thing as well here is we could have uh, HDMI run from your, your home theatre like what we've got in this room here. Um, and we could use HDMI 2 and power up a source. So we could use something like a Chromecast or something like that directly to, to the go projector. Directly to it. Um, and then feed the sound back via an SPDIF or a, uh, an optical output back to the amplifier. Back to the amp. Um, so there's a couple of different options there as well. 
Uh, noticeably on this model, it's actually got quite good speakers built into it. Not that we would promote using that in a uh, in a cinema environment, of course. I think I've got better speakers here, but just a couple to choose from. Just, just a few just to a choose from. <laughs> um, so you've got you've got uh, if you were to take it and place it in an outdoor environment or something like that, I guess you could um, use it on a table and or a coffee table and use the speakers built into it. Um, in terms of other adjustments, this is. Um, got a bit more flexibility than our previous models so this one's actually got a 1.3 times zoom in it um, so one of the uh, one of the features of, of, of having that that extra zoom means that now we can choose where we place it a little bit so previously in BenQ projectors uh, and it's something we've discussed quite often is the, the limitations of where you can place it in the room mm -hmm. um, so you can't see yet but you'll see later on in the video that um, Dave's got a stack of projectors that run across the back and uh, there's one that sits forward of everything else, and that's not because it's the best projector, although we believe it is. Uh, it's actually because of the limitation for where it can throw from. So it might be interesting to see if we can fit this one at the back of the room with your, your stack of other projectors. Um, in terms of other features, it's, it's a projector. It's got great light output. It's 3,000 lumens, so we can use it in a, a really bright room like this and, and have an image pop up behind us like this one here. Um, we can have it uh, in a nice dark environment as well. But um, I guess, you know, it's a box. It's well packaged like most BenQ projectors are. Um, and uh, it's a TK850. So. so some really good specifications that are that are going to come up against a lot of the other well-known brands in the industry. So your, um, you know, your Epsons, your, your Vivitex, um, definitely a few good brands out there, all good brands, but this is designed to, to, to combat that with some really high specifications. Yeah. And you're, you're spot on. I mean, look, there are there's brands that have come out with uh, new models over the last couple of months, and we've looked at those models and gone, well, well we need a model that does what those the, those products are doing. And um, we've absolutely looked at those models. <laughs> uh, and, and, and out of those models, look, dollar for dollar, value for money, especially if you are in a room that's not as light controlled mm. as you'd like. There are a lot of theatre rooms that may not necessarily have a door on it. Um, yes, you can sometimes combat that with curtains, uh, but in those rooms where you don't have as much light control, to have a projector with 3000 lumens brightness does mean that you can still use it in a relatively lit room and still get that, that benefit out of it. Yeah, spot on. So when you're talking about, I mean, this year and specifically, um, it's a big sporting year, obviously it's a leap, a leap year as well, but we've got, uh, in Australia, we've obviously got AFL, we've got uh, car racing, but globally we've got uh, the World Cup coming up, we've got um, the 2020 Summer Olympics coming up. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time to have a projector in your, your room that's not necessarily a theatre room, it might be just a, an entertaining room where you can have a motorised screen come down off the ceiling, have it triggered from the projector, uh, and have the projector in that space with a, a soundbar or a decent 5.1 setup. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in wall, in ceiling, have it hidden. Um, so that you know your, your wife acceptance factor or your husband acceptance factor, depending on which way you uh, you look at it, um, allows you to have it in the room, have it in the space, uh, and not necessarily have it as just a dedicated theatre room. Yep. Um, and you know, not worrying so much about having a little bit of light coming through the back of the curtains or coming down the hallway, like you said before. So this product's going to sell for uh, Australian. It'll be launched in March 2020. Um, it uh, will retail in Australia for $2,999. Um, it is a true 4K projector, so at any given point in time, we see 8.3 million individually addressable pixels on the screen. Um, so, you know, look, in terms of, you know, competition and stuff like that, it's certainly it's going to set a bit of a new benchmark, um, not in terms of brightness, because there's other projectors out that we know yep. that do that now, but in terms of having that brightness with a true 4K image, there's, um, there's nothing that's really going to come close for the price point. So mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing a few of these in... Uh, Digital Days installations. We certainly will. Um, and uh, hopefully you know, we'll show you a couple of extra shots at the end of this and uh, you can have a look for yourself. And uh, if you want to get in contact, that's the guy you're after. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. And uh, see you on the next unboxing. Thanks very much, guys.